Kia ora. Welcome back to Sloan Ranger Studio. Thanks for joining me today. I thought we'd look at non-metallic metal bronze. Uh, non-metallic metal has a lot of stigma associated with it, like it's only for the pros, but it's really not that bad. So hopefully we can bust all that stigma wide open and have a look at just how easy it is. So following on and using that fetid bloat drone miniature that we were painting that blue armor on, I'm going to be painting that kind of uh, bug motif that you see on a lot of Death Guard and lots of Nurgle miniatures, um, and it's right over the top of its um, front armor plate. It's going to be a little bit tricky because we've already got blue armor and verdigree of bronze is blue, but we'll try and make it work. Um, we're going to be using all Citadel colors, a um, bit of browns, a bit of yellows, a little bit of bone, a little bit of blue for the verdigree. Should be nice. Um, it's not too bad. I'm just going to start by basing in some browns and we'll get right into it. Alright, so here's our here's our fetid blow drum with that armor that we were painting last time. Um, first color we're going to be putting on is Rhinox Hide, which is a nice dark but still warm brown. So, I've just got a small small brush here and it's this it's this motif that runs all along here. So, I'm just going to smack on some brown. So go around and base coat this all in. Back in a sec. Okay, so we've got that brown on there. You can barely see it, but trust me, there's a layer of brown on there. The next step is going to be adding on some mixture of Mornfan brown, which is a lighter brown, kind of moving into a bit more of a uh, an orange, and and the Rhinox hide that we were just using for the base coat. So create a 50/50 mix and thin it down. So take a little bit of that thin down mixture on the on your brush and now we just want to start picking where we want our light to be so kind of wanted to start focusing around here so all I'm doing is just with very light coats stippling this lighter brown up towards the top here so just building building that brown up towards the middle there and I'll do that on the other side you can start to see maybe just a little bit of a transition towards the brighter parts so next step is to take a little bit of Mourn Fang, just on its own, thin it down like before, and now covering just a little bit less of the surface, bringing this paint towards the top. I'm not taking up the entire surface of the previous step, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm covering slightly less surface area with every step here. So I'm just going to enhance this a little bit by adding in this layer of brown and get back to you in a sec. Alright, so added in that Mornfang on its own now and the next step is going to be mixing in a little bit of the next step up towards a bit of an orange is Scrag Brown. And so you start to see a bit of a trend with this process where we introduce a new color and mix it with the previous color before we move on to the next color and so on and so forth. And just kind of 50-50ing it, not, not being too particular. But I've got a little 50-50 of this Mornfang and Scrag, and then using the same technique, just in just reducing that surface area again. So I'm just just every step getting closer towards the source of the light. Start to see we got quite a warm, quite a warm brown going on right right now not feeling too metallic but that's because non-metallic metal never really looks right until it's done not until you start adding your uh, your extreme highlights anyway I'm gonna add this next step of brown all around and uh, see you in a sec all right next step as you predicted it's just scrag brown on its own so thinning it down again a little bit thinner than you would a layer paint and then just the same thing Pushing it up towards, not too much on your brush, pushing it up towards your brighter point, covering less surface area than the previous step. So the next step is to create a 50-50 mix of our Mornfang Brown and this color here, Zemisi Desert. And so this is a nice kind of earthy yellow, um, goes well with bronze, and so you can also use it for non-metallic gold actually. Um, but so we've just created a 50-50 mix of Mornfang and the yellow, and this is what's going to start lifting it towards that, um, that iconic non-metallicness, which is where it starts getting bright and reflective. So, same thing, pushing it up in towards these high areas, you can start to see 
This introduction of yellow starts to make it feel like it's that warm metal. And keep this one nice and thin because it is a lot stronger obviously than the, than the rest. When you start adding brighter colours they can get bright very quick. So go around and start painting that into all of your high points and start pushing that bronze even higher. Alright so we've done that first layer of that 50-50 and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do it again. I'm keeping it very thin, thinner than the last steps. So just pushing this paint into where our highlights want to be. Maybe I want to make this one a little bit, a little bit more of a, a streak of light down this edge here. All right, that's starting to look pretty shiny now. Still pretty dull, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit more of our Zemisi and add it to that mixture. So we've got quite an ochre color now. Very thin, like the last step. A Little bit on your brush. You really don't want too much, so take off the excess on your thumb or however you like to do it. And really start to boost this yellow into the top parts now. starting to feel very warm. This is what we want on a bronze. That's what I want. So do this and around all of your all of your bronze bronze areas. We'll come back in a sec. Alright, so we've done that. Next step is to take a little bit of our Zamisi Desert just on its own. Very thin. Very thin. Just gonna a little bit of yellow right towards the very tips. Not much. Just like so. Okay, we're ready to start you know, boosting up those extreme highlights now. So I'm starting to mix in some Shabdi Bone, which is about as white as we're going to go for this. And I'm going to mix in a bit of a Shabdi Bone, a bit of my Zamisi Desert. And now I'm just going to pop that towards these brighter areas and, you know, keeping these, keeping these kind of glaze layers thin as possible so that we don't have too much too much interference so push this up into your brightest points go along some edges here and there feather if you need to I always do so yeah you can start to see how that starts to look nice and shiny now all right so I've gone gone around with that first layer of the Ushabdi and Zumisi nice and thin thought I'd show exactly what I'm doing here so I've got it up and towards these areas here and I just put on a little bit up towards the top take off the excess just help blend it sometimes I lick my brush a little bit of saliva can help heaps but if your paint's nice and thin it shouldn't be any 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 hassle so I'm just putting in little bits towards these areas that I want to pop. And just towards these tips here, towards the side, towards the very tip of that, and towards the very tip of this one on the bottom. Just pushing this nice thin paint over. And you can see it kind of smooths out the transitions between all the other colors. And if, obviously, the more times you do this, the smoother it gets, and that's really the fundamental of, <laughs> of blending in this kind of way the more steps you do it a lot of artists do it this way like flamey on and of course he just does a million steps but we'll get by with with what we're doing for now so yeah nice and thin pushing it towards the bottom here and if you ever find yourself looking at a part of a blend and going oh that's gross because we've got our palette over here if you look up in the top left all of the colors that will mix you can always go back because this is quite a mathematical process you can always go back to one of these colors nice and thin I think that there is not exactly how I want it to be so find that kind of that color for that transition just a little a little glaze over that transition area And that can help just smooth out some areas that you're not completely happy with. So I've got this area just down the bottom here that I was just working on. Just 
I just want a little bit of my mid-tone in there. So I'm grabbing some of my brown, nice and thin, just kind of painting it over that, that blend. And as you paint over it, it will help smooth it. So the next step is just going to be taking some pure Ushabdi. Very thin. Very thin. And not too much. Just towards the very tips. And you can go along some edges here. Get some nice edge highlights going. Because this is going to be the most, um, you know, the highest points of our blend. Where the light's strongest. So while you're doing this step with your Shabdi, go around some of these edges along the top here and just, just pull them out. So, you know, if we have a little bit of a... It's like Ben Comets who talks about breaking up his, his edge highlights. Fantastic painter. Just little dots here and there. Start to see how those little edges bring it to life a little bit. So do that around all of this, this bug motif and we're pretty much done. So that is our non-metallic bronze, pretty much done. I've gone through and highlighted all of these edges and done some little scratches here and there and obviously picked out the rivets. Um, scratches are great for covering up bad blends. <laughs> if you find your blends not looking as good as you want them. Last thing we're going to do though is we're going to weather it. Just a little bit. This is a bravery step. You know, <laughs> you could ruin it or you could just leave it here and be happy with it. At the moment it's looking a little bit gold and maybe that's because I put a little bit too much yellow in there. To bring it back down, of course, all you'd have to do is just grab some of your uh, Mornfang brown here, which is our kind of warm brown, and just kind of glaze that over some of these, some of these more yellow parts. See how that quickly, quickly transforms it from gold to bronze. So that's just something to be careful of when you're throwing in yellow as it can quickly become gold but easily fixed a little glaze of brown um, so what we're going to be doing is using this Sotec green here a nice cool blue which should hopefully contrast with our bright blue here for some weathering okay so conjure up some bravery have a shot of whiskey if you need to thin down your Sotec green is you know down to a about a glaze consistency, you know, very, very transparent. I um, don't know if that was actually clear. But then we're going to come in and just around some of these rivets, we're just going to put in a little circle of this blue. Not all of the rivets, just the ones maybe towards the, towards the bottom. And this blue, being nice and dark and cool, shouldn't conflict or clash too much. With the um, with the blue around it, very hard to see actually, but it is adding a lot. I swear. So I'm just going to go around and just add in a little glaze of this blue to some of the areas. Not always around a rivet. Sometimes you might just want to make it look like there's an area that's particularly particularly soggy. Um, and this blue is obviously going to, you know complement really nicely with all of this um, all of this orange and stuff that's going on in this bronze all right it's very subtle but we've gone and added in a little bit of a dark blue verdigris to this bronze we didn't want it to be too bright because obviously it would start to clash with this blue armor but the blue being complementary to the orange in this mournfang brown has created a really believable um, tint of this of this kind of blue and brown combination so that's quite nice it's dulled it down exactly how we wanted it and just kind of given it a little bit of interest if you were ever to get close enough to have a look at this bronze but i hope you like it see it wasn't that complicated it's a few steps but uh you know the smoothest things always are um but you know nothing's too complicated it's all about keeping things thin and pushing the paint into the places where you want the high points to be I like to work up like this, start dark and brighten things up and pick my pick my highlights, um, you know, right from the very first step of putting down my first colour. Um, some people like to <clears throat> put down their white first or pick their highlight right from the start. I'm not one of those people, this is just how I do it. So I hope you like it and I hope you give it a go. Non-metallic metal is really not that scary. It's very basic. 
um, and it looks really damn cool when you pull it off. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. You can imagine that bronze is going to be all over this guy, all around these areas here, and he's going to look really awesome when we're done. So hopefully by the next video I'll have uh, finished all that bronze in my own time. I will have something awesome to show you. But anyway, if you like my content, please like and subscribe. Uh, yeah, comment below what you want to see done next. Um, I'm having a feeling it could be this eye, or maybe we'll do some of the non-metallic steel. Maybe it could be this flesh. Ooh, a lot of fleshy bits back here. But anyway, let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.